Good evening and welcome to the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen. My name is Victoria Dangle. I'm the Executive Director of our organization. Um, this program is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, as well as the generous support of the Friends of the Artisan Lecture Series, and for that matter, your support as well, your support in being here. Um, for those of you less familiar with the organization, the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen was founded in 1785 by the skilled craftsmen of the city. Artisans at that initial meeting represented 22 different trades, including carpenters, saddlers, tailors, and silversmiths, among others. Today, this 230-year-old organization continues to serve the people of the city of New York through its educational and cultural programs, including our tuition-free mechanics institute, the General Society Library, and our nearly two-century-old lecture series, of which the Artisan Series is a part. You will find additional information about the General Society on the blue postcards on your seats. The space you are in tonight is the library of the General Society. Founded in 1820, it's the second oldest library in New York City and one of the city's three remaining membership circulating libraries. There's information about library membership on the front table. And so tonight we gather once more to pay tribute to the art of craftsmanship. The Artisan Lecture Series has committed itself to giving voice to internationally known artisans who will talk about the intricacies of their specialized crafts. The mission of the Artisan Lecture Series is to promote the work and art of skilled craftsmen to assist in ensuring that their unique knowledge is understood and carried forth for future generations. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker this evening who will discuss the many facets of contemporary paper cutting as well as their historical roots. From a panorama of international artists and her own work, she will demonstrate the endless possibilities and applications of this simple media. In her own work, this master artisan explores visual silhouette storytelling in artist books, paper cutting, and public art to create stunning works of art. Her work can be seen in major collections across the world, such as the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the J. Paul Getty Museum, and the Walker Art Center, as well as many art galleries, and her public art can be viewed in subway stations in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. I am pleased to introduce Beatrice Caron. Thank you. I cut on a table with a cutting mat and an exacto knife. And sometimes it's too big for my table, so I put half on the table, half on the floor, and that's this piece that uh, I finished. So it really depends on the piece how long, because I have some that are nine yards long, I have some that are 13 or 15 feet high. So it really depends on the dimension of how I'm going to get organized. Uh, I did sometimes cut directly on the wall by putting my cutting mat on the wall, and that's a killer for your rotator. <laughs> and that's how I do it. You see, it's really fast. <laughs> I even change clothes in between. And that was at the Museum uh, of Art and Design, and that's the Finnish piece. So that was Hells and Heavens. And I cut both pieces that are 13 feet high in the museum. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Do you find that there's a big difference from when you work by hand, uh, contrasted with when the machine produces it? I mean, you can reproduce with a machine. You cannot produce. I mean, the, the exacto knife is a machine in its own. It's just a tool. What a jet is a tool. You have to know what you're going to do. So the concept 
and the growing of the idea, how you're going to present it, uh, you know, like a filmmaker, what you cut, what you don't cut, what you take. Uh, much, in fact, paper cutting is still easier than filmmaking, but uh, it, it's, it's just a tool. Uh, and sometimes when I have a commission, whether it's for an illustration or for public art, sometimes I'm like, oh, I should maybe start with the computer first. It will save me time. But creating is a process. So I will create on the computer, then I will paper cut it, then I will transform it, then I will put it back on the computer, then I will think about it, then I will read a book again, and it goes you know, from one thing to another. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to be smart and I'll start by here. It doesn't work. It, you need to, to, to um, move your, your muscle and play with the dough and put it here, put it there, and see what it looks like and uh, what the idea could transform into, what it's related to, and that takes time. So that's, uh, that's where it's not a button you push, but a process you enter, and sometimes you have an idea and it just unfold the way you thought, and sometimes you're just stuck. It's, you, you see it doesn't work. You don't know what would work, but you see it doesn't work. And a lot of time I have the things at night also, when I'm dreaming. Uh, so very often at four in the morning, I'm like, I know what I'm going to do. And it's always brilliant at night, and sometimes in the <laughs> studio it's not that much. <laughs> Um, no, I'm very challenged in, uh, I mean, I did. I did when I was in Penland or Haystack, but I kind of uh, work in clay in a um, flat way. I'm challenged on the dimensionality, or I play with uh, papier mache. Papier mache I like more for dimension. Clay, it's uh, doughy, you know. It's, I like things with the knife, it's really like you cut, and it's cut or it's not. So it, it's, uh, it has a precise uh, thing that in clay, you're always on the border where I, I don't know where I am, so. Uh. Hi, um, I kind of uh, am wondering how you started out. Did you start out drawing as a, a young girl or did you start out cutting? Because I can understand drawing, but mm -hmm. then how did you get to the cutting part, which to me seems so... Oh, in tiresome. fact, when, uh, when I started, um, I just wanted to start cutting because I started to be an artist kind of late. And I didn't... Uh, I'm very bad with paint. I don't, I don't clean my brushes. So they look like cutters anyway at the end. <laughs> and I... So I decided because it was, um, I wanted to do illustration and I decided I would do everything paper cutting. So in fact, I was cutting directly all my elements that I wanted to put. And then after I was assembling them and then I could change the background, I could change the shape. So it was like a game, you know. And then after I started to make piece where everything is in one piece and I just cut directly through. And it had its limitation because it's right brain, left brain, that I forget because I'm doing a person jumping, so I'm, I'm, I'm always visualizing in my head the movement and the, that. So I'm doing, and then after, oh no, I should have let the, the head touch the frame, so if I put it on the wall, it doesn't flop. And that I don't have if I do not do the drawing. So then later I did the drawing. <laughs> you said you use Tyvek. Yes. And you use four layers of it. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent any kind of like warping? I mean, does it always, like it doesn't shift? Oh, I, um, I have larger than what I want to cut and I staple on the corner. I mean, depends the size because if it has to go a lot on the floor, um, then I will just staple the top, so like that I can shift and then restaple. It, it really depends. And in fact, if you put the four together, they never really match. Each one is a little different, and it's just to 
to start. And then after, if there is a place where I'm not too sure what I want to do, then I will leave it blank, and then I will just do it on one of them, and then see if I like, and I do on the other, but I clean up each piece individually. So it's an addition as the composition, but uh, it's all handmade. And do you cut, like, <clears throat> do you make one cut, or do you go through several layers? Oh yeah, I go through, I can go through six layers, in fact, with the Tyvek I use. But usually I do four, yeah. I save, <laughs> save for later. <laughs> hmm. Uh, how I began to get commissions uh, by uh, pure anger. <laughs> I, I started from nowhere, I'm self-taught, and I uh, produce a lot, and I apply to everything, and I still do. And um, I applied for eight years for public art with only rejection before I got my first one. And it's still, I still apply to a lot of things, and I, I still have about 99.9% .9 rejection. So I apply, I apply, I never really got residencies, but I still apply, and uh, every time I am rejected, I say, I'll show them, and I just send another 10 applications. <laughs> <laughs> I use a lot of positive and negatives. <laughs> it's in my work and in my moods. <laughs> Yes, I, I wondered if you had any repair techniques uh, or editing techniques for these large uh, format uh, cutouts um, that you do. I mean, repair technique, there is no paper cutting police, so nobody knows what it's supposed to be. So if I cut too much, it's a bigger hole. Flop, or, or you realize it's going to flop over, or you've cut more than you meant to, or your if knife it's, slipped. Yeah, if it's something and um, it's supposed to hang and it doesn't hang, I did it once, I can do it twice. <coughs> I, yeah, you can do a whole nine yards. It just, if you begin to think about it, you will complain more about it than just start to do it. Uh, so I'm really good at shutting myself and it's like, don't even think about it, do it. <laughs> so what kind of tie-back do you use? Is it a specific kind? Yeah, in fact, I use a Tyvek. Uh, you know Tyvek, they have a graphic department, Tyvek graphics, so they have a lot of things and you can ask for different samples of different ones. I'm, um, in fact, I'm ordering a special one. I make special order where it's black one side and white the other. And it's like a 1085, I think the number or something like that. So it's a very thin one, but it's double printed on one side. And uh, I like when it's really black and I like when it's white on the side I cut because otherwise I don't see anything. Do you ever decide you hate a piece and throw it away? No, um, I don't. No, I don't throw it away. Sometimes I should, but I, I don't. Um, I don't think I'm a good judge of what I'm doing, and I keep it because. And sometimes I think I hate, and then after I just put them away, and five years after I think, oh, that's very interesting, or maybe I can use it for something else. So I never, yeah. I mean, rarely, sometimes, yes, but. Where is your studio? Uh, my studio is on the Upper West Side. So I'm uh, right in the city, and uh, I can run in the park and cut. Run and cut, but not at the same time. <laughs> Thanks. I actually already addressed. I just wanted to thank you. Your work is wonderful and all the intricacies. I love how you tell those little stories. You have stories within the stories and it's just so fascinating. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great. <laughs>
a fabulous presentation when um, Camille Weart, the, the, our um, artist and curator, uh, introduced us to you in the summer. I knew it was going to be absolutely marvelous. Your work is truly breathtaking, and I don't know what is going on with these commissioning people because you <laughs> should be getting a hundred percent response. Um, so we would like to make a little presentation to you as a memento of this evening. And to do so, uh, Victoria Dengel, our executive director. Yes, and, and I concur. That was just enchanting. I enjoyed every minute of it, uh, Beatrice, so thank you. And so on behalf of the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen of the City of New York, founded 1785, we would like to express our gratitude to Beatrice Coron, stories cut from paper for your participation in the General Society Artisan Lecture Series. Thank you so Thank much. You. And because we hope you'll be coming back many, many times, we'd like to present you with library membership to the General Society Library. Uh, <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put some hardboard on the table. <laughs> and we have a little memento of the evening for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, right, yes. And, um, Finally, I want to thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, we're, about to, we're going to have a wine and cheese reception, and I'm sure Beatrice will be happy to answer more questions. Andrew, <laughs> 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 uh, but but I also wanted to, I also do just want to mention that I don't know how many of you had an opportunity to look at Beatrice's table at the back. It was it's fabulous, and this wonderful book called Eccentric City is actually for sale, and I think there are a few copies left.